eight of hurricane season right now. Is your hurricane kit fully stocked? Meteorologist Mark Elliott shows us how to take action if a tropical storm takes aim at your community. The disturbance itself here doesn't matter as much as the fact that we just have all this moisture sitting right there and it's pushing even farther inland today. It's further pushing farther. There, there is this invest, but there's other areas of a tropical, sort of a tropical uh, disturbed weather, so to speak. It's all about the moisture, though, Jim, and it's pushing in farther to inland than yesterday. Yeah, and we talked humor. I definitely recommend the Weather Service and Kansas City Twitter feed. It is, uh, it is a good one. All right, but let's go to what's happening in the Southern Plains with the rainfall. So this area across West Texas is actually the only spot in the country with exceptional drought, a large area with extreme drought. And then we bring in yesterday's rain fairly well placed right here. So we did get some good rainfall to help out with the drought. Unfortunately, it caused issues though with flooding and flash flooding. Sonora, Texas, you're right in that heart of the three, three to five inches of rainfall. And today we are going to see more rain. So that's why the flood watches are up. Flash flood watch here right along that I-10 corridor. Watch this rain continue to surge north. We're going to see showers, some heavy at times. You know the drill with this kind of rain, the moisture in the atmosphere. And we're going to actually watch some showers stick around here as we get into the next two days. The rain hang on one part of the mountains. Yeah, and not oh yeah. The other rain side. shadow or the cloud shadow. Yep, right there. That's great. We should put it in a in a weather book. All right. We Welcome back, everyone. Amy H. Early. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. And I'm meteorologist Jordan Steele. All right, we want to help you get your day started with a look at weather impacting you across the nation this morning. A lot of us are going to be seeing and experiencing rainfall or smoke. It's very, very active, of course. And of course, the tropics are relentless. Oh, okay. So we've got another area to watch about right to come off the coast here. That could be Sally. We'll have to talk about that. Oh, and then these two systems are going to be impacting from Florida all the way through the Mid-Atlantic, where we've got a lot of energy coming in, and we got a front draping across your region. We could be looking at flood concerns for Baltimore, yeah, D.C. Yeah, big rain already today. And so speaking of big rain, we had it in Texas yesterday. More to come. It's still snowing in the Rockies. That's right. And then the fires are out of control yeah. with smoke impacting so many Americans. It's a scary scene near Cars, Oregon. On go and step through this. In Oregon first, where we have a half million acres consumed. You can see where these fires are. Uh, the biggest ones right here affecting us south of Portland. The smoke, though, of course, had been getting up in that area. Watching the winds for where that smoke is going. The Beachy Creek Fire is uh, one of the largest or the largest right now, where we've got more than 150,000 acres burned. Lions had more than 100,000. Holiday Farm, more than 100,000. These are big fires. Um, and the winds, of course, have been such a huge factor in this as well. The power outages here continue to be up. We're up over 20 to 30,000 right along I-5 and just to the east or yeah, just to the east of it. Again, tracking these active fires for us here in Oregon. Uh, several of them burning a lot of acreage, but the smoke is even more widespread actually from that impacting many more people. So even if you're not affected directly by the fires, you are no doubt seeing the smoke in some cases dealing with breathing it and the air quality problems that come with it. Jordan, we have another day with red flying warnings here because of the wind and the heat. Yeah. Starting off very gray, very rainy. There's a chance for more coming in off and on throughout the entire day. So we, in fact, through the overnight too. So we've got a risk of possible flash flooding. Watching this zone, remember yesterday morning, Smithfield, you were dealing with flash flooding, streets inundated and filled with water. That kind of scene could be felt and dealt with all the way up the eastern seaboard along the I-95 and just off to the east. So watching the risk for flooding and flash flooding, that's why flash flood watches are up. Here we go with the rainfall starting this morning. We're going to see waves of showers come on in. Uh, one right now, sort of big batch of moisture, you get a break, then daytime, daytime heating comes into play. We get more. And any of these little thumb, they look little. They're going to be big rainmakers. Um, and the reason is we just have so much moisture in the air. Step outside. Your dew point is high. It's back to summertime levels and back to actually more of a humid day for the summertime. So concerned about the big rain coming in even into tomorrow. There are places in the mid-Atlantic under flash flood watches this morning. So please don't ever underestimate the power of water. Meteorologist Alex Wilson shows you how to be safe should flood waters begin to rise. Your allergy tracker. Yes, it's coming back. Allergies are getting a lot of you this fall already. I know it's the peak of the hurricane season. We are right here, right at the top. Let me do that in white. We're right at the top, right at the peak. Now, we don't have any hurricanes right now, which I think, you know, most years on September the 10th, you do have one. Uh, but we know that we still have 57% of the season left to go, and we do have a lot of activity to watch right now. Invest 94L, another area to watch close to home. Tropical Storm Paulette and Renee right here across the middle of the Atlantic both have some potential to become a hurricane. And then two new areas to watch, one about to come off the coast of Africa, 
here uh, in short order, and this is probably going to be Sally. It's got a high percent chance of developing. Let's run through all these, Jordan. Let's do it. Let's start off with Paulette. Unbelievable, isn't it? And then we go to this scene. I mean, this is also unbelievable in a different kind of way, but this snow-covered scene here in Colorado as old man Winter made a late summer appearance in the Centennial State. I mean, snow on the roads, on the rooftops, on the trees. This is Idaho Springs west of Denver, just over three inches falling in the area. I mean, that cold front leaving behind some cool and some rainy weather. In fact, in Denver, that's how you're starting today. 37 degrees with rain. Oh, boy. Chilly out there. All right, so here's what's happening now. So the system, the whole big system, the big dip in our jet stream is left behind this upper level low, and we are seeing that stick around. That's still bringing the snow showers. You go up in elevation, it's still bringing a very chilly rain here um, for a lot of us from Denver down through Colorado Springs. So in this pattern, we're also going to see the rain still spreading out across parts of the plains. We're going to see some of that moisture still pulling back up across Texas and all the way up into the Mississippi Valley, working in tandem together the trough, the low pressure and the high pressure that we have. Everything's all working together actually in the atmosphere to give us a lot of moisture right here that squeeze play in between. So the rainfall will add up, but with the, the dip in the jet stream, it's going to be a chilly rain again in Kansas City in Oklahoma City in Dallas in Lubbock. If you get any showers today, oh boy, it was a very cold day yesterday. One of your top September coldest days, actually more than colder than you've seen in years. All right, let's go to the rain though. Tomorrow we see it again in Des Moines, Iowa. It's been a drizzly, rainy, chilly pattern over the last two days that continues into your weekend. We're going to see the shower stick around Chicago, St. Louis and back down into Springfield in Missouri. Steph. Well, President, we read about it and yeah. showed it to you on yeah. the Weather Channel, yeah. but I've never seen it in person. No, I've never seen it in Which person is fine, either. Actually. So I wonder if the pilot was the kind of person that keeps their tank like always half full see? in their car. You see what I know I'm you saying? give me a hard time, and yeah. I, that's that's a good reason to keep always your tank fill always up. more than halfway. Always fill up, and <laughs> the right. tank is half full. Luckily, everything went okay there, yes. and everything was everybody was safe. All right, this morning travel, we've got a lot of rainfall in pockets. One of those is right here on Long Island. A flash flood warning for Nassau, parts of Nassau, Queens, where Freeport, Hempstead, Levittown, you are under this flash flood warning. Do you notice how the Bright reds and oranges have just been sitting right here. This has been ongoing um, for the last hour, hour and a half or so. So watching this very heavy rainfall right across the middle of Long Island, heading along parts of the LIE. It is just a soaker uh, of a situation there. Also Long I-95, you've got some rain, pockets of it very heavy at times. And there's more today. Look how this lifts north. This morning around Newburgh and Poughkeepsie, we get the showers. Some bring in the heavy rainfall. Temperatures are in the 70s. Dew points are in the 70s. So it's a very saturated air mass and that goes all the way up through the cloud layer. You're going to get rounds of heavy rain through the day today all across this area. Southern New England, get ready for it. In New York City, a couple of rounds coming in even overnight. Steph. Well, wire fires. And they're, they're beating it by like 10 degrees. I know, it's yeah. just nuts. No, it's really kind of crazy out there in so many areas. Kansas City, it's raining again today as well. Here we go. So not only is it chilly, it's going to be rainy. So you've got the rain, whether you're traveling on 29 or traveling up on 80, uh, 35, all roads are wet across this area. So showers continue throughout the day today. We're going to see this rain on the move lifting a little farther to the north. Chicago, we get into the few showers as we get into the afternoon. Um, by the afternoon, maybe this breaks up a little bit, um, but I think it's going to stay kind of murky, kind of misty at times, and you'll keep the clouds around for sure as well. It's one of the ways that we keep those temperatures so cool. Look at this morning, only 51 in Kansas City, and just watch how it doesn't really warm up that much today. 53 at lunchtime. Des Moines, you're doing the same thing. Your temperatures are hanging out in the 50s. You need a jacket you're even considering is my raincoat enough do I need a heavier coat no but it is it's really not going to warm up that much here today meanwhile on the flip side of the front we stay in the 80s around St. Louis and for the most part I think the rain is going to stay away there might be a brief sprinkler shower throughout the day but we're going to see this corridor of rain shifting up through Missouri Iowa and then into northern parts of Illinois that's where travel will be wet today Steph. There are then the heavy winds sweeping across the West are fueling these extreme wildfires, forcing mass evacuations. Hundreds of buildings scorched by the blazes like the Creek Fire in California. It has exploded to more than 166,000 acres. It is 0% contained. Our Dave Malkoff is covering the massive wildfire in Fresno. Officials say 30,000 residents of Fresno County and 15,000 residents of Madera County have been evacuated. And Steph, we're still not getting help from Mother Nature. No. I mean, you look at the winds. We don't 
all have the heat because the smoke right. is actually preventing that solar radiation from getting in. Well, that's the other thing, yeah. right? So let's talk about all these different fires and where they are and what we are contending with here. And first, we want to start off here. Um, this is a Creek fire. There's San Francisco, San Francisco, I should say, just to give you an idea. And we've seen all these pictures of how it's just painted in red here. And notice the acreage. Remember, one acre is about the size of a football field without the end zones. Just to give you an idea, all right, this is a very shocking graphic. This will have your jaw on the floor. Largest wildfires in um, California, the Mendocino. We all remember that one from 2018, right? But look at two, three, and four are all from this year. It's just awful. Uh, as we go north into Oregon, we've had a lot of problems here as well. Of course, the Beachy and the Lion's Head now combined to be the Santium fire, um, and that's growing as well. We have Holiday Farm fire as well. And look at the acreage here in Washington, our largest uh, fires in Washington, and there are multiple here, uh, over 170,000. Ash is another man's treasure. That's yeah. the story with the rain in the Northeast. Okay, fill me in. I, I, he nice, was like, nice. he's like, Abrams, where are you, you going me. with this? You got me. Right off the top. Well, if you look at the drought monitor, New England, we really need the rain. Places like Philly, you know, southbound, we actually are good on rainfall, but we need it pretty badly. Connecticut, um, Massachusetts, all the way up into Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, you guys are in this little like dry bubble, so you could use that rain but the moisture is just tremendous here, all right? The amount that you can squeeze out of the atmosphere, you might hear the word PWAT, precipitable water. And it's as if you take a core of the atmosphere and how much you can squeeze out. And our levels here in some places are really, really high. So if you can squeeze more moisture out of the atmosphere and you have the squeezing mechanism, which is a boundary, that's why there's that possibility for flooding. And if you read these uh, flood advisories that are posted here, it's about rainfall rate. And we, <clears throat> excuse me, try to express this all the time. It's about how much rain is going to come down. You know, it's not super dry. I mean, it isn't to New England, but we're super wet overall, but it's coming down so quickly. You see, we already have flash flood warnings here. Um, you know, in this area, by the way, it was southeastern Richmond. Was it, be it was last week, right? Or was it the beginning of the week? Yesterday. All was it yesterday when they had the yesterday? Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there's so much, there's so much weather going on right now. You know, it's like, just overwhelming at times. So here's a look as we head into the afternoon. Again, you'll have the rain. Some of these are going to put it down, and that means that you are going to experience flooding. And it lasts really as we head through our Friday morning. Jen. And then the downpour. Get up here. <laughs> exactly. You let, you know, right? All right. So there is a lot to watch in the tropics. And we're going to give you, you know, we'll, we'll focus in on really what's happening when we look out into the Atlantic, but we also have to look closer to home here. Let's have a look at New Orleans. Good morning here down in the bayou. Plenty of sun today. New Orleans heading into the low 90s, dew points in the 70s, which means it's super humid. So we're going to have a lot of tropical downpours um, and also as we head into the weekend as well. So let's talk more about these tropical downpours and why we're seeing it. Well, essentially, the tropics are helping give us this surge of moisture. And I was just looking at the PWAT values up and down the East Coast over two inches, which is high. I know that might not sound like a lot, but if you have this column of air and you could dump out two inches real quickly, thanks to our front, right? That's gonna squeeze out more moisture in the atmosphere, then you're gonna have very heavy downpours. And so we've got them. And as we head into really Friday into Saturday morning, the Carolinas is not gonna stop there. So the thing is, is this time of year, if you have any sort of front kind of dangling, you've always got to watch for the tail end of those to spin something up. And then, you know, what's interesting is you watch this batch of moisture and it looks like it's trying to kind of do a little something, all right? And so that's the reason that the Hurricane Center has 20% chance of development with it. So that was that batch of moisture moving into Florida. So even if it doesn't turn into anything, it is still going to bring heavy rain and a lot. But watch this thing on the models here. And notice here, do you see this little bump right there in the winds? Ever so slightly, all right? 
that's an indication that this thing is, it, you could look at that as a wave. I don't know if we would technically want to call it that yet, but you see the spin trying to happen. When you have that little bump, Jen, that's when you look to see if we could get a little spin mm -hmm. happening after that. And either way, though, there'll be a lot of raging in the West, coloring the skies red in San Mateo County, uh, California. I mean, it, it looks like you're on Mars along the West Coast, doesn't it? The smoke hovering over Half Moon Bay, prompting the county health officer to declare a health emergency on Wednesday. Debris and ash from the fires could contain hazardous substances like building material and chemicals from household items. Now in Salem, Oregon, smoke from wildfires also creating an orange hue in the sky, that orangish red that we've just seen everywhere. You can't escape it, it seems. The Santiam fire, of course, you have the beachy, the lion's head, they're all merging and getting bigger here. Uh, they have prompted nearby evacuations and burned over 132,000 acres. The dense smoke poising, posing serious health risks and has residents wondering what's next. Of course, all the smoke getting into the eyes. It's really bad. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like 2020, you know, it's like, <laughs> what's next? Yeah, so let's talk about what exactly causes this red coloring in the sky, all right? So we're gonna have a look at the spectrum here, okay? And you know, we have red, orange, yellow, you heard of Roy G. Biv, you have all of those colors, but you have to look at the wavelengths, right? So let's first look at what happens with our blue, indigo, and violet. Those are shorter wavelengths. As you look at the yellow, oranges, and reds, those are longer wavelengths. So if you have a fire, obviously it releases smoke and all sorts of particles in the atmosphere. And so what happens is, is those shorter wavelengths get scattered out, and so you don't see those colors, while the orange and red are the only wavelengths that are able to make it to your eye, and that is actually what causes that reddish, orangish hue. It's been looking like Mars, though. That's really the best comparison of what it, it's just shocking how red it is. And it's going all the way offshore. It's going into the Midwest. It's going into the Southeast. Obviously, it is just looking at the satellite imagery of all the smoke that we're seeing here along the West Coast. It's heartbreaking. It's hard to believe it is so thick and it's everywhere. You can't escape it. So therefore, there's air quality alerts and smoke advisories. And again, some of you, obviously, there's no comparison to what we're dealing with here along the East Coast, you know, especially into the Northeast and also into the Southeast. But I do know that some people are getting a little bit of irritation due to that smoke and whatnot. But again, our focus is the West Coast where we just have that smoke that is so, so thick. Let's have a look at the San Francisco Bay Area and just show you how bad it is. I mean, yeah, it's unhealthy for those sensitive groups here. You don't want to be outside. Even I feel like, Jim, even if you aren't in a sensitive group, I, you really don't want to be outside well, exercising that. As we mentioned, the chemicals and building right, yeah, material. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this Today is the climatological peak of hurricane season, but don't forget, we still have 57% of the season left. And let me tell you, it's very busy in the tropics. Look at this map. Look at this map. Are you kidding me? Eight dots on the map. Two areas to watch in the Eastern Pacific. We have Invest 94L off the Carolina coast. Three areas to watch in the Atlantic, plus Tropical Storm, Paulette and Renee, and not to mention, you know, those uh, waves coming off of Africa. It is overwhelming, and that's just the tropics. We also had that snow yesterday in Denver. We have the fires. I mean, there's so much going on in the weather here. Now, all that moisture is actually helping fuel downpours in Florida, soaking places like Miami. Uh, but I know that South Florida is very thankful for this because A, it's the rainy season, and B, it's been so hot. We had 0.79 inches of rain that fell in Miami officially Wednesday, bringing the yearly total to almost 11 inches above average for the year. But Jim, this is when we get our rain in South Florida. And unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have a lot more of it. Do you remember South Irma? Oh, wow. Right? Wow, that was three Irma, years ago. Three years ago, yeah, coming in. Uh, Record. It right. seems it, you get, there's, you know, obviously the South, you're going to have more, you're closer to the tropics and everything, so those numbers are going to be higher. Um, but, you know, we're talking about if you took a column of the atmosphere, you could squeeze over two inches of rain out. And if you read the advisories that are posted here, and you guys don't have to read them. That's what we're, that's what we do. That's our job. We got you. So don't worry about reading them. I read all these for you earlier. If you read these advisories, they talk about the rate of rainfall. 
It's always about the rate, and that's why they're worried about saturated grounds. We're not, you know, two above, two below type of a thing here, but it's the rainfall rate, and that's caused flash flood warnings already this morning for us here as we zoom on a little bit closer to show you exactly who's affected by that. St. Mary's County, you're affected by it. Mechanicsville, Milestown, Lexington Park, even though you're not in the flash flood warning, you're getting very heavy rainfall right now. Also, as we look on Long Island here, all right, Nassau and Queens counties here, Freeport, Hempstead, and as you go even east of there uh, to Islip, we are in a flash flood warning as well. A lot of people just, you know, finishing up their summertime in the Hamptons or their time in their Hamptons, and everyone is uh, heading back to work and school here. Look at that. Three hours, you've had four inches of rain practically. Again, rainfall rate, that's why we have those flash flood warnings. And Jim, you know, as we head through the day and into tomorrow morning, we're going to see more of those downpours. Yeah, heavy downpours.